Hello and welcome to this crochet tutorial. My name is Garnet and I'm here to show you how to make these super cute and really warm fingerless gloves with the accent bows. I really like them. They're quick and easy to make. We use a size G hook and not very much yarn. Come with me as we go ahead and make this tutorial on how to make these fingerless gloves. Let's get started. The materials and tools that we will use in making these fingerless gloves with accent bow. Here I have Red Heart in the color Aran, and we will only use a real small amount because you can see the bow here is very small. Our second color, which is our main color, is called Perfect Pink, also by Red Heart Super Saver. The hook size that I am using is a size G, 4.00 millimeter. I'm using a tapestry needle with a point this time and a pair of scissors. Before beginning any project, especially with yarn from a skein, it's always best to pull out some yarn so that you can maintain proper tension. So I'm encouraging you to pull out some yarn, not a lot. I use the center pull, and that way you're, you can maintain proper tension of your stitches as we go along. So to begin, we're going to start with a small tail. We're going to make a slip knot. Okay, then place it on your hook and tighten it up. So for this first row, we're going to chain 18, but I'm asking that you chain it just a little loose, not normal tension so that when you do place your stitches in it won't be so tight. So here I have two, three, four, continue till you have 18. Please pause your video. After you have chained 18, we're going to skip the first chain. We don't count the one on our hook, we count the one that's the first chain completed. So skip that one. And in the second one, I usually pick up two parts of the chain and make, oops, a half double crochet. So to make a half double crochet, we're gonna go yarn over, skip that chain, and in the next chain, drop a loop. We have three loops on our hook, yarn over and through all three. Continue down till you get to the end of the row where we will have 17 half double crochets. At the end of the row, chain one and turn your work. We're going to be placing our first half double crochet in our first stitch right here. And so we're going to half double crochet all the way across, and this will be our second row. At the end of the row, chain one and turn, you will want to do 17 half double crochets in each row for a total of five rows. So here's one, and here's two. After you complete two, you'll do three more. I'll meet you there, and I'll show you how to place in our thumb hole opening. Here you can see I've completed my five rows. Now if yours curled a little, I suggest you stretch it just a tiny bit so that it will lay flat for you. So let's continue on and start row six. So the first thing we're going to do is the five half double crochets. Two, 
three, four, and five. All right? And you'll notice that it'll be here that it'll fit. Okay? The next thing we'll do is chain seven. And you want your chains to be loose. Because if you notice, when you do the top of your stitches, it's not always the same as when we do the foundation chain. So I'm encouraging you to do those a little loose. So if it's kind of snug around, just make it just a little bit larger. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. We'll go back down here to our count. Here's our last half double crochet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're going to skip those. And then the next one, in number eight, we're going to do a half double crochet. So place your finger on the loop, yarn over, go through your hole, draw up a loop, snug it up a little bit because of the looseness there, and then go ahead and go through all three. Now before we move on, I want you to see if your chains are just as loose as your work down here. If it's too tight, I'm going to encourage you to take these chains out and make your chains just a little bit looser. Okay? If you have to, go ahead and pause the video and then pick up, we'll pick up where you can start again. But I'm going to continue on. So we have one half double crochet here. We're going to do two, three, four, and five. Sorry, I saw a bug in the floor. <laughs> it's winter time here and it's cold, so sometimes they manage to come in. So at the end of the row, <laughs> I know, stop laughing, it's not that funny. Okay, so at the end of the row, we're going to chain one and turn. Okay, and I want to show you how to do this row. Let me get my mouse out of the way. I want to show you how to do this row because it's not going to be something that you think that, oh, it's easy to do. We want to maintain the 17 half double crochets. So yarn over, and we're going to pick up our first one. We're going to do our next ones till we get to the end of these half double crochets. Okay, now normally when you do stitches, you're on the right hand side, but you'll notice that we're on the back side of these stitches. So the last one for this one right here is right here because we're actually doing the left side of the stitches. So here I have four. Our fifth one is going to be right here. Can you see that right there? Okay, so let's place our fifth one. And we're picking up two loops of our chain as well. So here's our chain. Okay, so here I have five already. So here we're going to pick up. Here's number six. Number seven. Number eight, nine, ten, eleven, here's twelve, okay, so here now we're on, we're back to our regular stitches because this is the last chain. So here's going to be number 13, 14, 15, 16, number 17. That's usually in that chain one. Chain one and turn. So here's our thumb opening continue with the 17 half double crochets 
chain one turn for a total of 21 rows. So you have here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So keep going until you have 21, and I'll meet you there. Please pause your video. So once you have completed your 21 rows, I would like for you to try it on before we sew it up. The 21 rows fits my hand, okay? So I want to make sure that it fits your hand. So place your thumb in the hole and then bring the ends over. Where we want to make sure it fits is right through here. We don't want it tight. So bring it over and you'll notice that for my hand it comes together. Yes, this will have to pull over just a little bit, but it will fit just fine. So make sure that over your knuckles is where it it does not have to stretch. Okay? If it fits there, then we're going to go ahead and sew it up. If it's not big enough, I encourage you to put a couple more rows in. If it's too big, say like it overlaps like this, you need to remove a row or two. Either way, once you get to that point, we're going to go ahead and sew it up. Please pause your video if you need to make size adjustments. And the, after that, we'll go ahead and pull out our needle. And when you do, we're going to cut this to 18 inches so that we have enough to sew here. So after you've made your adjusted size, go ahead and we're going to cut it. And then we're going to bring the end through the loop here. Okay, and you want to snug it up. Then, we're going to load our needle with our yarn. I find that the best way to load it is by bringing it up from underneath and pinching the yarn so that you have a nice little fold there. Take that fold and work it through the eye of that needle. And then pull it through. If you try it with the ends here, it has a tendency to open up and fray, and you don't want to snag your yarn. So, the next thing we're going to do, don't worry about our tail. We're going to weave or we're going to weave that in when we get to the cuff. We're going to do a um, whip stitch. So, we're going to take the end piece here and go underneath that one chain. I think I pulled off too much yarn because <laughs> I, I really didn't look good. Okay, so for this first one, we want to do it twice. And as going down this row, I encourage you to only do one stitch at a time. If you do two and then pull your yarn, it has a tendency to pull your stitching and it may make it so it doesn't work right. So I'm going through the two and picking up that one chain stitch. Okay, so continue on down to the end of the row and I'll show you how to finish it off there. So at the end of the row, we want to go over this twice. And the nice thing about the pointy needle is that it, it won't... Um, make it so that it snags the yarns, it'll actually go through them. So once you go through that twice here, we're going to go to the inside and we're going to finish off our ends here. So to do that, what I choose to do is you see the stitching right here. Okay, we're going to go down this row here Pull the needle through, okay, and then you want to stretch it just a little bit so it doesn't gather in. Now you want to go over the top of that first stitch there where your needle came out. You want to go over the top of that and go down and go back the way you came. If you go back through the same hole, 
it'll basically pull your stitching out. So see how it stops right there. Okay, and then stretch it just a little bit and then go over that last stitch again and come on down. Okay, and then stretch it again and then we can take our scissors and cut it close. So here we have our first glove for me my second and you can put your hand in it and see how it fits. Okay? This is actually the bottom. I put it on upside down. But if you notice we have five here and five here so <laughs> anyway so let's move on to our cuff which will start here where our tail is at. So we're going to start working on the cuff. We're going to use a short tail as before. Let's go ahead and place our slip knot on our hook. Now for the cuff we're going to be using um, double crochets. Now for the if you kept the 21 rows we're going to use 28 double crochets around. If you had taken and made less rows, then I would suggest 26. If you added more rows, then I would suggest 30 or 32. But you need to have an even number for whatever you have chosen to do. So we're going to start off with a standing double crochet and we're going to start it right here where we started to sew it together. So to make a standing double crochet, place your finger on the loop, yarn over, go ahead and pull up a loop, yarn over through two, yarn over through two. Hold on a second, I'm going to turn my computer noise off. It never fails every time I start to do a video, everybody and their mother starts to contact me. I think the video or the uh, internet world knows what I'm doing, right? <laughs> anyway, so now that we have our first one in here, let's go ahead and make our second one, which will be right here. We're doing our second double crochet and go over all your tails. Bring all your tails over and we're going to go over them. Okay, the third one I'm going to place right here in the next stitch and then we're going to stop. I want to show you what you need to do next. Okay, we're going to take it and fold it in half so your first fold will be right here at that first stitch and you want to stretch it all the way across. Find your halfway point. If you need to, do like I'm doing, place your needle back in there and say this is my halfway point. So between where your first stitch is at and here, your last one, I need you to place 14 half double crochets if you did the 21 rows. If you did less rows, then I need for you to do 12. If you did um, more rows, then I need for you to do 16 or 18, depending on how many additional rows you did. I figure two stitches per extra row will determine if you need additional ones. So for this one, with the 21 rows, I would like for you to place 14 double crochets from this point to this point. Okay, once you go ahead and do that, we're going to do 14 from the other side of the needle to where we began. We need a total of 28 double crochets, an even number for the 21 rows, and as before for the other rows according to what size you need. Go ahead and do that and I'll see you in a few minutes. Please pause your video. Alright, so here I'm going to show you what I've done for the first 14. Got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, so some of them I did over the the rows and some of them I had to add at the additional in between the rows and some of them I had to kind of place here and there kind of thing. I did frog. I ain't going to lie. 
I did frog. So um, be patient with yourself on doing this. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the other side. And since I've already got um, my one here, either I can take it out because I've already got an idea of the placement or I can leave it in there and then count across. Go ahead and complete it and I'll see you in just a minute. Please pause your video. Alright, so how did you do? Don't be angry at me. <laughs> Sometimes, um, I started to think too that after we did half, we could have went half of that and did seven and then seven and seven and seven. But hindsight is so much a part of after we did it, right? Okay, so at the end of the row, we're going to go ahead and slip stitch into the top of that half double crochet. I mean the double crochet. All of these rows are double crochet now. Okay, so now that, that standing double crochet will now have chain stitches above it. So we're going to chain three. Now this row, because it is um, for a cuff and we would like a ribbed look, we're going to do a front post double crochet. So yarn over and go behind, take the hook and go behind that post. And that'll basically be the front. Complete your double crochet, yarn over, and on the next one we're going to go from behind and go around that post. And we're going to pull up a loop and complete our double crochet. So we're going to do front and back. Let me show you how to do it one more time in case you're not familiar. Yarn over. Okay, this one has the back loop on it. You want to make sure that you don't accidentally grab it. So we're going to go on to our next available um, double crochet po uh, post. We're going to go behind it. Pull the yarn over. Bring up a loop. Yarn over through two. Yarn over through two. You notice how we have one on the front, this one's on the back, this one's now on the front. Okay, let's try the one for the back. This is our next available one. We're going to take the hook and go from behind and go over that one post. Okay, and flip your work forward a little bit. Take your yarn, go over, and come back up so you're clear of the post. Yarn over through two yarn over through two. Let me show you one more time and then we can go ahead and complete our row. We're going to do our front and we're going to do our back. Okay, continue on until you get to this last one and I'll meet you there. So as you made your way around, you, you complete the last one as a front post double crochet. Your next one will be where your chain stitch is at, which will actually be the back post. But we're not going to do back posts because there will be a chain stitch there. So to complete this row, you want to go to the top of the chain, three, and do a slip stitch. And then we're going to chain three again. Okay, so as you can see here, here's our chain. That means our next stitch will go right here. And we're going to do a front post double crochet. And then the next one will do the back post double crochet. Okay, and you will complete that around. You can see how it starts to form a line right here. We're going to be doing this for a total of five rows. To count your rows, you will basically open up and read the back posts. So here we have row one, row two, row three. So after this particular row, we will do this two more rows and then um, you will have completed the cuffing unless you choose to make it longer. Go ahead and do those and I'll show you how to finish off our row. 
to complete this row we're going to go to the top of the double crochet and do a slip stitch. You want to leave about six to eight inches so that you can weave in for a tail. When you weave in, turn it in and you can go up and down here. And we'll go on to our bow next. So we're going to pull out our Aran, which is a light beige color. I'm going to start off with just a small tail and place a slip knot in the end of the hook here, or the end of the yarn. And I'm going to encourage you to pull out quite a bit of yarn. So I'm going to stop the video and pull out a bunch of yarn because um, we want to do this all in one step. And I will take you step by step through this bow, so let's get going. We're going to chain five, two, three, four, and five. We're going to slip stitch into that first chain and then chain four. Two, three, four. I'm going to show you how to do the first of five trebles. So to make one treble, place your finger on that top loop, wrap the hook twice into the center of our circle that we made, yarn over through two, yarn over through two, yarn over through two, and then slide your treble over if you need to. Let's make four more. And if I am going a little fast for you, I encourage you to please pause your video. As you're putting your trebles on there to slide them over, I have one more treble to make for a total of five. One, two, three, four, five trebles. Okay, slide your work over. Chain four, one, two, three, and four. Now into our circle, we're going to place a single crochet, slide it over, single crochet one more time. Okay, so we have half of our bow done. Now we're going to chain four, one, two, three, four, and into our circle, five half I mean five trebles. I don't know what I was thinking. I had a bunch of other st stitches in mind. <laughs> here's one. Here's two. Want to slide them over. Here's number three. Number four number five. And I haven't used all of my yarn yet. You can see it's still sitting out here. So at the end of the five, you want to chain four. One, two, three, and four. And we're going to single crochet into our circle. Okay. Do not cut your yarn. I'm going to show you something a little easy here. Pull out a large enough loop, bring your work through that loop, and then tighten it up. Okay, so here's what we have so far. Now I'm going to encourage you to take your tail as well as your yarn, and we're going to start wrapping. So pull it down just a little bit and bring them together. Those first couple of wraps you want to try and make tight so that it pulls it in together. And then keep on wrapping. You can go to either side. So you can see how we have here. Okay, now you're going to see how my other tail 
we want it to stop in the back. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap a couple more times. Now since I have already done one bow, I want to make sure that I have the same look on wraps. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this a couple more times so that I have the same look. Hmm, looks the same to me. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and place my thumb on it and I'm going to make a long enough tail because we're also going to use this sewing thread to sew it on to our um, glove. We'll go ahead and retighten that. So let's go ahead and thread our needle. Okay, we're going to pick this up and we're going to tighten this again. Okay, now bring it to the back. The back will look different than the front. See the front has those nice little front stitches. So here on the back, okay, place your thumb on top of that and just go through the center and pull it through. We're going to do that a couple of times to lock that in place. All right. There we go. Now, since I have already done one bow, I want to show you how to place the bows on so that you will have the right way. You'll notice here I have a thumb opening here, so I want to have a thumb opening over here. Have them both aiming in the same direction. If you do it this way, then when you put it on your hand, your bow will be down here, and that won't work. So since our, both our hands are like this, we want the bows on top. So with our thumb opening to the center like that, we're going to place our bow up here and make it about the same separation, which I have one, two rows, one, two rows, and I have the ends of my bow almost touching the ends of the top here. So I'm going to raise my little bow up. I'm going to go in and come under. And then I'm going to go through the bow here. So you can see I'm going through and through. Okay? And then we're going to pull. We're going to do it one more time. But you notice I'm not pulling real tight, okay? Because I want it to lay flat with those stitches there. All right. So we're going to take our needle and bring all our work to the inside. Now I'm not going to be placing any knot. I'm going to be doing some weavings that will include part of the wrap of the bow. And this will hold our bow in place. Remember when you go over to go over a stitch? I'm going to do this about five times. There we go. Here we have our completed fingerless gloves. Aren't they cute? And they fit so good. Now this isn't the first pair of gloves I've made. I've made some that were in black for my niece Sylvia and she loves them. I've also made a pair of these for a friend of mine's daughter and she loves them also. And I thought with Valentine's Day coming up, this would be a perfect addition for a nice outfit that you may be wearing. In the meanwhile, you can also text 
with these gloves you can grab things simply such as being able to use your fingers without having things in your way so I want to thank you so much for watching this video and hopefully your gloves will keep you as warm and cozy as mine keep my gloves as well also you'll notice that I do get my fingernails painted I use a gel paint and I have the ladies at the salon do it I like doing the fingertips because as they grow out they don't show the separation of the gel to your fingernail so just some added tips for you um, Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for visiting me. And I do hope that you come back and see me again for another crocheted video. Till then, bye-bye.